How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to do an oil change on a Fiat 500. Now this is a full step-by-step -step guide, so there may be some uh, pretty basic stuff for those of you who are a little more experienced, but this is meant for the person who's never done this job before. It's a pretty straightforward job. Uh, it takes a little bit of, there's a few quirks, which I will explain for you, uh, but let's get started. So first things first, you're gonna have to lift the car. Now you could obviously do a jack and jack stands. Um, the Fiat does not have a central front jacking point, which makes it kind of annoying to lift the front. Uh, you can't lift it all at once. You gotta lift from one side then the other. I don't love doing that. Um, it just takes more time. So I'm gonna use ramps here. Uh, as you can see, these ramps are really not the best. Uh, and so I had to use these little extension blocks, which don't really lock on too well. And as you'll see here, I had a little bit of trouble getting up or it was a little sketchy for a short second, but uh, I was able to get up just fine. If you have a good set of ramps, just make sure they are good for lower uh, clearance cars as the Fiat is rather low. So get the car up in jack stands and chalk off the rear wheels to make sure that you are nice and safe. Next, we're gonna go ahead and open the hood. The latch is here in the driver's side footwell, and then you can just pop the hood open and use the prop to keep it up. Now, under the car, we have this under tray, which annoyingly does not have an access port for the drain plug, so we're gonna have to take it off. It's held on by six 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, these are all pretty easy to access as far as under trays go, so uh, just take your time, work your way around. Uh, obviously a ratchet and uh, socket works great, but if you do have one of these electric ratchets, it'll make very quick work of this job. Now, the drain plug for the Fiat is located right here in front of this cross member, which is pretty annoying. I know a lot of cars do this, but it always bugs me because it's going to make a mess when you drain the oil. 13 millimeter. Uh, this should be relatively loose. Now, this is the first time I did this oil change. This is my sister's car. Uh, whoever she took it to beforehand probably over-tightened it a little bit. The, As you'll see later, the, the torque spec for the oil drain plug is only about 20 foot-pounds. So this shouldn't be super tight, but if you've brought it to someone else before, it's a good chance it might be on a little bit tighter than it should. But anyways, you're going to go ahead and let all the oil drain out into your drain pan and just leave this open while you go on top because as you open the oil cap and as you take off the filter, more oil will drain out from the bottom. So go ahead and take off the cap. And then the next quirk we have is the location of the filter, which is in a pretty annoying and hard to get to spot. You'll need a 27 millimeter socket. I used a wobble and then an extension, which turned out to be a little bit too short. So I added another extension later, as you'll see here in a second. Uh, it helps to put the socket on first, then the extension, then your ratchet, and then you should be able to loosen it. Now be careful because this is a plastic cap and you don't want to strip off that um, sort of bolt head that's on top of the filter cap. So just make sure it's nicely seated on there. A good six point bolt is a really good idea here. But again, this should only be about 20 foot pounds. It shouldn't be on too tight, but again, it kind of depends on who did the job last. Now getting this oil filter housing out of the engine bay without making a huge mess is uh, pretty much impossible. So uh, if you go straight up, the sort of curvature of the filter cap will, will sort of push the various hoses aside and you should be able to get it out. But as you'll see, you will definitely drip some oil. So make sure to clean that up before you put everything back together. We can then go ahead and replace our oil filter. This one just presses on. It might be on a little snug, so I spun it a few times and then you pull and it comes right off. Um, this one was definitely uh, near the end of its life. You can go ahead and clean out the, the f filter housing. And then I like these MAN filters. Uh, MAN makes uh, really nice filters for most European cars. I use it on my dad's BMW. When I had my Porsche Boxster, I use it on that. Uh, and these are really just great quality filters. Uh, you know, this is 10 to $11 uh, versus a cheap filter, which might be five. So, you know, for extra four or $5, I think it's definitely worth it to get a nicer one. You can then go ahead and pull off the old O-ring from the oil filter housing, and then we're gonna grab our oil. The Fiat uses 5W30. I'm using this full synthetic from Kirkland, which is the Costco brand. It's gotten pretty good reviews. 
uh, on independent testing, so I trust it. Full synthetic, should be good to go. And then you're just gonna go ahead and get some of that new oil on your new O-ring, which will allow it to make a nice seal. So just dip it in there, and then you can go ahead and install it on the oil filter housing. Next, we can go ahead and pop our new oil filter into the filter housing. And again, I should just press fit on there nice and easy. Now, I usually like to pre-fill my oil filters if they go in from the bottom, but obviously that's not gonna happen here. Uh, to put this in, it's a little annoying, but I'd like to go in upside down. So put the top in first. Again, the curvature will push the hoses aside and then you sort of flip it once you're in there. Um, this is one of the few times I've been pretty happy to have small hands. Uh, this is not a job for those with larger hands, or at the very least, it'd be frustrating. Then you can go ahead and tighten it back on. The torque spec is 20 foot pounds. Um, you know, for oil filter housings and caps, really just want to go sort of snug, so I didn't bother to use a torque wrench in this one. You can then go ahead and reinstall your drain plug. Now, another quirk is that there is no crush washer. There's just this built-in orange gasket, which you can't replace. So again, a little annoying. Uh, you probably should replace this plug, I'd say maybe every five oil changes or something. My gaskets still look nice and supple, so I left the same one on there, but you're gonna have to replace the plug every once in a, every once in a while. 20 foot pounds on the drain plug. Again, really not that tight. Most oil drain plugs are like high 20s to low 30s. So uh, you know, if you take it somewhere else, make sure that they torque it down to the right torque spec. You can then go ahead and reinstall your under tray. Again, those six 10 millimeter bolts should go in pretty easily. If you have one of those electric wrenches, this is a great job for it because it just makes it so much easier. All right, so now we can go ahead and fill up the oil on our car. Now there is one small quirk you have to think about if you use ramps instead of jack sands. And that is that with being on ramps, the car is actually going to be at a bit of an angle. And so therefore the reading you get on the dipstick is going to be a little bit higher than the true oil level. So what I like to do is I fill the car all the way to the full line of the dipstick when I have it on the ramps, right? We can't turn the car on and take it off the ramps because there's no oil in it. Don't do that, right? So I fill it up all the way to the full line and then I turn the car on, I take it off the ramps and I put it on level ground. Once I'm on the level ground, I can then go ahead and recheck the oil level. And as you'll see here, the oil level on level ground is gonna be a little bit lower than what I had with the car on the ramps. Probably about half a quart or so, right? So I was at full on about half on the dipstick. The dipstick's usually about a quart. So now I can go ahead and add a little bit more oil, bring it back closer to that full line. I don't like to, I don't like to go too close to full because you don't wanna really overfill your oil either. That can lead to some problems. So I like to go about three quarters uh, ish full on the dipstick. I'm gonna call that good. It's gonna keep dripping down into the oil pan as especially as you drive the car and stuff. So it's a good idea to check also after driving a little bit, but usually three quarters is a good level. It's gonna drip down a little bit more. The level's gonna be a little bit higher. Now we're all done with filling the car and we can go ahead and close the hood. And the last thing we need to do now is we have to reset that oil change light. And thankfully, Fiat actually makes this pretty simple. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get back into your car and then you're gonna put the key into the ignition and turn it to the on position. So that's one click. Car's gonna beep. And then you're going to press the accelerator pedal down to the floor slowly three times. One, two, three turn the key to off, and then you can start the car. And the next time you start the car, there should be no oil change message. And you're done. So all in all, a pretty easy job. Uh, again, there are a few quirks, probably to be expected working on a Fiat, but really simple, a great job to do if you've never worked on cars before. Just make sure you double check your work before you call it done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.